How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'll do the basic intro thing and keep it short and send it your way like before. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Good morning. Yeah. I will let you. Sorry. No. I will let you know when we're on. Okay. Uh, and is this my? Yes. All right. You ready to roll? <laughs> And first, wow, we are all here. Woohoo! There is nothing more satisfying than we when we all get together and have a chance to be around each other, see each other, and experience whatever it is we're experiencing together. So thank you so much for being here. And we're here for something really fun. You know, this has been a long uh, process to, to arrive at what we want to be doing in our master planning for Horizon House. We we want to make the community better for those who are here and, and a, a place where people want to be in the future. And we have had the privilege, and many of you in our studio audience here have had the privilege of working with and or speaking with our friends from Methune, our architects for the last year plus. Uh, and it has been a great experience. And I hope that what you see it reflects the quality of the work, uh, the work of, of your comments and thoughts and ideas of the Methuen group themselves, uh, and also of our resident architects who have been a part of this process from the beginning, George Lotsky, uh, Jane Hastings, and Grant Hildebrand, who've, who have helped make this a process that is truly interactive. You know, I know we repeat these things, but I, I, I think it's always good to repeat stuff that matters, and that is they don't do this at most communities. They just say, hey, here's what we're doing. Hope you like it, if not, tough beans. <laughs> we involve you because we want to have a place that reflects your interest and what you believe is a great place to be. And hopefully we've done that. It doesn't mean everything is finalized today. It means here's where we are. We do take input and comments. Some we listen to, some we just look at our shoes and ignore. <laughs> So gotta be honest, you know, we're not doing everything you say because I found early on that when I tried to do something with 450 people in mind and do one thing they all wanted, it looked like a goat rodeo. So we don't want that. Anyway, we've got our Methune friends here and I'm gonna let uh, Elizabeth, if you wanted, or Lisa, whoever would like to do the introductions and I'll turn it over to them. Have at it. Good 
Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Elizabeth Gordon. I am the lead designer for the project. And maybe before we get into the presentation today, it would be good to just do a quick introduction of our team. We have a couple members here. Uh, Lisa, if you want to introduce yourself. I'm Lisa Scarbante. I'm this way. I have to go over here, first of all. Um, and maybe I don't need this one. Yeah, okay. Um, Lisa Scarbante, I'm the um, partner in charge of the work. And we have so enjoyed getting to know you all, getting to know your facility, your campus. It's been amazing. Um, we've learned so much, and we are excited to show you kind of some of the things we've been working on and uh, get your input. So thank you all for coming. Hi, uh, my name is Chi Aoyama and I am also uh, uh, one of the lead architects on the team. Thank you. And uh, there are also other members of the team that are um, not physically here, but have put a lot of work into the work that we'll be sharing with you today. Uh, we have Jessica Arujo, which is a she's a senior interior designer designer on our team. Nina Burgess, who's an interior designer. Michael Everett, who is a project architect, and Gordon Walker, which some of you may know, um, who is a mentor and really works with our team on all aspects of the design. And then last but not least is Sean Cryan, who is our project manager. So. Um, I'll be doing most of the talking, but I certainly haven't been, haven't done most of the work. I've done my fair share. Anyhow, uh, I think we can just jump into the presentation and get started. All right, so um, we can do a quick overview of the agenda, which is on the next slide. Um, we've already gone through the introductions. We thought we would spend a little bit of time um, talking with all of you about our process and how we've engaged residents throughout the process. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then move into a master plan overview and then spend some time really going through each one of the seven master plan projects a little bit more in depth, and then we will finish up with a Q&A session after the presentation. Next slide, please. So for those of you that are in the room, um, we'll have microphones that will be passed around for questions. And for those of you that are not in the room, please send an email to C at horizonhouse.org, and she will help facilitate any questions that, that those of you that are not currently present in the room might have for the design team. All right, so um, we thought we'd start a little bit with the, the, um, the process that we went through um, and arriving on the design that we have, that we're going to share with you today. Um, one of the things that struck us immediately when we started this job is how important it was to get to know the, the community and the culture of Horizon House. We know that this is your home and we wanna do the very best for all of you to amplify all of the amazing things that um, Horizon House already has going for it. And so we did a few separate things to get information from all of you and to really learn more about the culture, the community and what's working and what's not working. Next slide, please. Uh, the first uh, thing that we did is we have a number of resident groups that we are working with on an ongoing basis. Um, we spend time um, learning about the current spaces, how we might make improvements. We also have been um, updating some of these groups on design and getting feedback. And really the goal here is to have open and transparent communication between our design team and Horizon House residents. Some of the groups that we've been meeting with are the event support committee. They've really helped us um, understand the needs for this space, um, Anderson Hall. I will say that um, in particular, there was a wonderful report that was facilitated by Pat Fritz and other members of the ESC that has really helped us understand the functional requirements for this space. So thank you very much to that group. In addition, we've been meeting with the resident professional group, which Mike mentioned earlier, 
Special thanks to Jane Hastings, George Lashti, and Grant Hildebrandt. They have been absolutely instrumental in being the voice of Horizon House residents and really giving us valuable feedback through all of our um, project presentations. Um, in addition, we have met with the Interior Design Advisory Group. This is a group that will meet with in the later stages of design to just give feedback on the overall look and feel. We've met with the Biophilic Design Advisory Group, which is a group that will give feedback on plantings and character of garden spaces, both on the exterior of the building and the interior of the building. And then we've gotten valuable feedback from both the art committee and the library committee. So thank you so much to all the residents that have given us feedback. In addition to the resident groups, next slide please. We also had a visioning session at the very early stages of the project. This was a session uh, where we met with a cross section of residents that were um, selected by Eli um, that represented residents living in different areas of the campus from different backgrounds. And we worked through um, some questions that gave us insight to the culture and community at Horizon House, as well as conducted some visual exercises to give us a sense of what the character of Horizon House of the future wants to be. Some of the key takeaway learnings from our team was um, really why people chose Horizon House. And I would say that one of the things that came up over and over was the happy buzz that people felt like when they visited Horizon House, there was activity, there were people, um, there were lots of opportunities for chance encounters and a sense of social connectedness. And that really resonated with our team. Um, and has been really inspiration for us for all of the projects we've worked on to date. In addition, we learned that residents would like to um, uh, um, have a space that really feels like home and not a hotel. And um, that's something that was really, really important for us as well. We've really been thinking about all of our design through the lens of home. Um, uh, favorite spaces at Horizon House, we learned that people love those little niches and eddies of seating because they help facilitate the happy buzz and allow residents to have those chance encounters, as well as the dining spaces. Um, I think that this building and campus has an amazing relationship to the city with incredible views of Freeway Park, but also some really wonderful um, urban street views as well. And as far as things that people would like to change, clearly there were lots of different answers, but um, a few that rose to the top were um, a little bit more variety um, in the amenity and dining spaces, and that you know circulation and wayfinding could be improved. And I'll say our team has experienced that firsthand because it took us <laughs> four or five visits before we could find our, our way around here. Um, so um, I, I actually am realizing that I forgot one very important resident and that is Peter Shapiro. He has been our thread of continuity throughout all of this um, engagement. And so thank you so much, Peter, for providing that continuity and really representing um, the residents. So I apologize for, for late, being late and pointing you out. Um, on the next slide um, is a result of the visual exercise we did in the visioning session. Um, these were some of the favorite images that residents selected during that se session. And one thing that really stood out to us is really kind of the honest Pacific Northwest sensibility of all of these images. They feel warm and homey. Um, they feel simple and um, yet at the same time, incredibly comfortable. There were a lot of really um, amazing um, images that the residents selected that really highlighted the context that this uh, campus has within the city with these beautiful views and integrated kind of green space that you see on um, your balconies and with your views from the dining room, but then also images that um, really personify that urban context, uh, both of which makes the Horizon House campus incredibly unique. So um, with that, we can move into the master plan. 
Um, in addition to collecting information from all of you, uh, we also have spent a good deal of time in on the campus roaming around. You may have seen us masked and taking photographs or uh, randomly roaming the halls to get a sense for um, the campus, the architecture, where things could be improved, what things are working really well. And this really culminated in the master plan that we'll show with you today. So if we go to the next slide, um, some of our early analysis um, here we can share with you um, really has primarily been on this level one um, experience. Um, a few key notes um, that our team um, observed and learned from staff and residents is that um, starting with the lobby, you know, the lobby would benefit from a little bit more efficient use of space. It's clearly a very, very active space. There's a lot of residents and a lot of chance encounters, but there aren't a lot of spaces for residents to go. Um, a lot of people spend time chatting around the elevator. We feel like with a little bit of, um, uh, replanning of the space that it could actually be even more of a hub of activity for residents. In addition, we think that um, it could also benefit from a little bit more clear circulation. It's not obvious when you go into the lobby which direction you should go. And so we feel like there are some simple things we can do to really help that. And then lastly, we feel that we could improve um, security as well just by replanning that space. Another thing that we observed was um, that the offices are spread out uh, across the campus and in various locations. And they also are taking some prime real estate on level one. So one of the things that we are thinking about is how we can consolidate some of those offices, which will create um, a little bit more of an opportunity for Horizon House employees to connect and collaborate with each other, but also free up some valuable real estate on level one for resident amenities. Circulation was another thing that we've already touched on but became increasingly clear. Um, you know, we feel like there are some things that we can do architecturally to really help people understand where to go and how all the spaces are connected to each other. Um, the Dining and Bistro, uh, while it is an incredibly popular space, we noticed and we heard from um, residents and employees that it wasn't utilized all day. There was a lot of activity during the peak dining hours, but we think that there could be um, ways that we can improve that space so that residents feel more comfortable using it throughout the day. And then... Um, Last but not least is Anderson Hall. Um, clearly this is, I think we've we heard it described as the heart of Horizon House. So one of the most important spaces for residents. And we know that it's not performing at its best. And so um, part of what we have been studying is how to make this space perform the best that it possibly can and really work to better support all of you. Next slide, please. So um, all of that research and analysis really led us to seven key projects that we feel um, will really benefit the community and address some of the issues that, um, that I stated previously. So um, we will go into each one of these projects um, one by one throughout the presentation. So I won't go into too much detail now, um, but I will list them all to you. The other thing, um, to note is that these um, projects are in the early stages of design. So um, Anderson Hall is the one that is furthest along. We do have one more design meeting to finalize the design. Um, all the other projects are in a phase called concept design. And so in concept design, that means that we will be iterating on these ideas and you have plenty of time to comment and give feedback to us as we finalize the design. Um, you can send comments or um, uh, questions to Eli and Lauren, and then of course there'll be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation for any further clarifications you may desire. Um, one thing about this view, for those of you that are not familiar with an axonometric view, um, and believe me, most people are not, <laughs> unless you are living in the world of architecture, um, this view is a 
floor plan view. And if you imagine slicing the building about four feet from the ground on level one, and then removing the lid and looking down into the space, that is the perspective that this um, is being taken from. And you'll see a number of these axonometrics throughout the presentation. Um, we've also included some before and after images to help orient people as well, because it's not always easy to understand what's happening in a floor plan view. Um, so with that, um, the spaces that we feel are important to focus on for this master plan effort is number one, the lobby. The lobby, as I mentioned before, is sort of one of those happy buzz spaces. And we feel that a uh, little bit of planning could, you know, basically allow the space to be utilized better, but also will amplify the happy buzz that really is um, a key part of the Horizon House community. Another space that we have been looking at is actually the dining space. Um, we are looking at the dining room proper and thinking of sort of a new concept that we're calling hearth um, for the dining room. We're working in conjunction with Morrison and Scopos, who are the kitchen design firm, um, to make sure that it functions well for all of you um, and that it works operationally. Um, we're imagining that the current bistro actually expands into the area where the offices, the executive row offices once were, and we are adding what we're calling a coffee lounge. And the coffee lounge is a place basically like a coffee shop where you could grab a cup of coffee in the morning or grab a glass of wine or a cocktail in the evening. You could sit around and chat. It has much more of a lounge type function uh, so that residents can spend some time there. We've also relocated the private dining to that area so that it can be um, utilized uh, on off hours by residents, but it also could be closed up and utilized for private events. And then um, we've also added a teaching kitchen. So we'll go a little bit more into detail about the dining program later. In addition, we are um, adding what we're calling a veranda, um, which is an enclosed walkway that connects the orchid lounge to the fireside lounge. Uh, we feel that this will provide a really unique experience for residents, but will also help with some of those circulation issues that we mentioned um, in the beginning of the presentation. And then um, in addition to that, we're also working to improve Anderson Hall and uh, consolidate offices, as I mentioned. And then the very last project that we'll share is an idea for a new hall, um, which would be a larger auditorium type space that could potentially um, allow for some of the larger events, events that are a bit too large for Anderson Hall to, uh, to be supported. And we're currently showing that on um, B1 Terrace. So without further ado, um, we can walk through each one of these projects a little bit more in detail. All right, next slide, please. So the first project that we'll walk through is Anderson Hall. As I mentioned, this one is a little bit further in the design process. We do have one um, final meeting with our advisory groups um, to get feedback on the final design. If we go to the next slide, uh, some of the things that we heard um, from the resident groups and committees is that um, there are limiting, limited lighting controls there are acoustical issues, um, the finishes need updating and that we have a noisy mechanical system. The other thing that we heard is that it can be difficult at times when there's a larger event for residents coming in and out of the space due to the way that the entrances are set up. Um, our goals really were first and foremost to make it function well. So approve acoustical quality to approve, uh, improve lighting and allow there to be lighting that supports myriad events. Um, we know right now that this um, particular lighting scheme doesn't support the art um, gallery events and things like that. So we're really working hard to make sure that we have flexible lighting that can uh, support a whole host of events. Um, in addition, we are working with our AV consultants to make the, um, the controls easy and user friendly so that it's not frustrating and complicated to use. And then uh, we also are working to create a connection with the Fireside Lounge. One of the things that we heard in our um, 
resident feedback is that sometimes there are events that are far too large for Anderson Hall and they might spill out into the Fireside Lounge in addition. So we um, have come up with some strategies to create a stronger connection between those two spaces. We go to the next slide, please. So this is uh, where we are in the design process now. Um, this is an exploded axonometric. So it's still that kind of dollhouse view that I described before, except that what you're seeing above it is the ceiling, like it's been exploded off of the, off of the, uh, uh, the room. Uh, so essentially what we've worked on is um, changing out the ceiling uh, to improve the acoustics and lighting, but also to give the space just a little bit more head height. We know that there are low ceilings in this area and this coffered acoustical ceiling actually allows us to gain just a few inches more head height. It as well, it allows us to conceal lighting and AV controls so that the overall appearance of the ceiling is much cleaner and much um, neater. And there are fewer things that are actually impeding the, the head height by sticking down below. In addition, we are working with our MEP consultants to update the mechanical system so that it's much quieter and that will in turn improve acoustics as well. In relation to the finishes, we are um, looking at ways to just refresh the room and give it a much more updated look. But in addition, we're also looking at materials that work in conjunction with the ceiling to improve acoustics. One of the things that we're looking at specifically is um, actually changing the floor out to um, a cork floor. One of the things we learned is that that will allow these demising walls to have a better acoustical seal and it'll prevent some of the noise spillover between rooms when the space is actually closed down into separate rooms. Um, we also are looking at ways to um, design the back wall so that it better supports events like this um, and uh, makes People actually stand out when they're presenting and works well on video, et cetera. And then last but not least, we're also looking at ways to create that connection between Fireside Lounge. So we've reorganized the entries a little bit. As you may notice, we've added a bit of glass um, on both of the side entries. And we actually um, have proposed sliding doors that open up so that this space can physically open up and be connected to the Fireside Lounge when you do have those large scale events. Um, we know that glazing also allows people to see in and out, which we think most of the time might be desirable, but we have built in curtains that can close off visibility if there are more private events happening in those spaces. If we go to the next slide. So we'll walk into a series of before and after images. Um, I think you all probably recognize this if you're standing in the Fireside Lounge and looking at Anderson Hall, this is the way that the space looks now. And if we go to the next slide, this is the proposed um, solution. So here you can see the doors that open up and connect to the Fireside Lounge, which we feel will be really wonderful for those large scale events or potentially events that are happening in the forum that may wanna connect to the Fireside Lounge. Um, in addition, we, um, are looking for ways to integrate art. We know how, impart, how important art is to Horizon House. In fact, we feel that you have a collection that rivals the Seattle Art Museum, so <laughs> which is pretty amazing. Um, and so we're really looking at ways through all of these projects to integrate art in a really meaningful way. We imagine that there could be some amazing um, works of art integrated into the entries of all of these spaces in Anderson Hall. We go to the next slide, a view from inside the room. So this is existing and this is a view from the social room entry. And then the next view, please. This is the after looking at what it feels like to be inside of this space. Um, so again, you can see that we're gaining just a little bit of head height here and we're able to integrate a lot of the AV and uh, lighting elements within the ceiling, which will give a much cleaner look to the overall space. And then uh, the freshening up of materials really kind of streamlines uh, the look and feel of the space. And then one thing that we are um, really excited about is the stained glass window that's currently located at the entry of the chapel. Um, we're currently showing relocating it to in front of the window. Um, we think that that piece of art is spectacular and 
um, we feel that you know, giving it a little bit of backlighting and allowing it to be in a really special place within the chapel not only highlights the art in the best possible way, but also creates a really wonderful focal point within this room. Next slide, please. Okay, moving into the dining area and the veranda. Um, next slide, please. As I mentioned before, um, we heard feedback that, um, that the dining room was wonderful, but people didn't feel comfortable using it when it wasn't in peak service. Um, we also heard that a little bit more variety of seating, maybe some of those eddies that we talked about as being popular would work really well integrated into the dining experience. Uh, residents let us know that they would love to have a lounge or a coffee bar, a place to maybe grab a glass of wine or a cup of coffee and um, spend some time with friends. We also heard that, you know, broadening the experience of dining would be really beneficial to residents. So uh, we worked with the Morrison Scopos team in adding a teaching kitchen as well as an enhanced grab and go uh, functionality, which will be integrated into the dining experience as well. So really our goal is to create much more variety for all of you so that you can really choose what type of environment you'd like to dine in, as well as create some um, moments that are a little bit more casual if you want to stop and have a cup of coffee or a little more formal if you want to dress up a little bit and have a nice dinner. And so we've been working really hard on creating that variety of experiences and really ultimately design a space that residents feel comfortable using and can use throughout the day. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is an axonometric view of the new dining experience. Um, the main dining we are thinking of and rebranding as hearth. One of the reasons for that is it will feature a wood fired oven and we'll have a little bit more of an open kitchen concept so that residents can um, actually watch some of the food being prepared and it becomes um, theater as well as uh, a wonderful dining experience. Um, across the hall is the coffee lounge. This is the space that um, formerly was the bistro as well as the executive row offices. Um, we are taking over that space and creating that lounge functionality, a place to grab coffee, a place to grab a glass of wine. It also creates a much more intimate experience that contrasts the larger dining room so that residents have sort of a choice of what type of environment they'd like to spend their time. This is a space that also will have the teaching kitchen as well as the private dining facility. And then last but not least, we are showing um, what we're calling a veranda, which I mentioned before, which is an enclosed walkway that connects the fireside lounge to the orchid lounge and provides residents a scenic route um, between those two spaces. It actually could even be a walking loop for residents if they wanted to create a really wonderful walking loop on level one. And um, we've included an outdoor deck so that if there's lovely weather, residents could sit out on that um, wonderful deck that has an amazing view and little eddies of seating so that people can actually sit there and spend time. We imagine it's gonna feel a little bit like a sunroom or a solarium or something like that, which we think could be quite wonderful. Next slide, please. So um, I think you all are familiar with this view as well. This is a view from the lobby as you're walking into the main dining area as it is now. And if you go to the next slide, this is what we're proposing here. What you see on the right is the host station. Uh, and then behind that are grab and go lockers that um, would allow residents to order food, pick it up and take it back up to their units if they desire. Uh, the host would also be seating people in the dining room as well. On the left-hand side is um, the coffee lounge. And so what you're seeing here are some, um, I guess we're thinking of it as like street side seating um, off to the left. Um, so residents can enjoy a cup of coffee or a drink or a snack in that location. And then further in just to the left um, is actually the, um, the coffee bar itself. If we go to the next slide. Uh, this is a current view in the dining room looking toward the kitchen. 
Um, this is probably one of the most dramatic transformations in that we're really working to create um, a much more open feel. Uh, one of the things we discovered in our analysis is that there are actually two additional skylights in that area that are currently covered up. And so um, one of the things that we would like to do is open those back up so that we're getting more natural daylight into the dining space and the corridor in general, um, as well as create um, a much more um, open view of the kitchen so that we can really highlight that amazing hearth that'll be a, a key cornerstone experience of the new dining space. So if we can go to the next slide. This is a view into that hearth space. You can see the um, really beautiful wood-fired oven. It's making me hungry looking at it. Um, <laughs> uh, and, and a little bit more of an open kitchen concept for this new dining experience. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, this is a view of um, the coveted seats. We've heard this is one of the most popular places to sit in the dining room, and we completely understand why. There's an amazing city view and garden view. Um, with the addition of the veranda, we've been very, very conscientious about preserving views and also um, maintaining that connection with nature that people have when they're sitting in those coveted um, uh, window seats. So if we go to the next slide, here's a view of that same space. Um, here we imagine bringing in some interior plantings that align with the skylights uh, that it will be in the new veranda space. And then we're really allowing the view to be quite open so that residents still can see out to that amazing city view beyond. And then um, this is last but not least a view from the um, main circulation of the dining room. Um, you can kind of see how um, the space is a little bit more compartmentalized now. If we go to the next view, we're really opening the space up and creating a much stronger connection between the primary circulation space and the dining spaces in general. All right, moving over to um, the coffee lounge side. This is a view of the existing bistro space, um, which I know you're all probably very familiar with. As we go to the next slide, uh, this is a view of the cafe lounge. So one of the things that our team's really been thinking of is how, um, how to connect all of the dining experiences to the site and um, what was really influencing the main dining was the connection to Freeway Park and the terraces and the gardens. So you see a much more open, airy, natural articulation. In the cafe lounge, to contrast that, we've been thinking much more about the urban sensibility because there will be views to, um, to the city street beyond now. Um, and so creating something that has a little bit more intimacy um, that contrasts the kind of feel of the dining room to give much more variation for residents um, from an experience perspective relative to dining. Um, you can see here that we're looking at ways to integrate artwork into um, the um, exterior wall and the interior of the bistro as well as the dining room. If we go to the next slide. This is a view from behind the bistro. So if you imagine yourself in the executive row corridor um, where the offices are, um, this is what it is now. And if we go to the next slide, um, this is actually one of the areas that will have the most dramatic change. This is really the lounge space that's part of that coffee shop experience. So we imagine that residents could do a number of activities here sit and read the newspaper, play games, read, um, have a cocktail before moving over to dinner, any number of things. So, um, and then they'll have an amazing view of kind of the city street scape, which we imagine will invite a lot of people watching. Um, what you see off in the, um, the distance on the left-hand side is actually the new location of the private dining. So um, yeah, right there, yeah. Um, and the thought, of moving it to this location is that it could have sliding doors that are open and people could utilize it when it's not being used for private dining. Um, but when it is used for an event, those doors can close off and uh, the resident that's utilizing that space um, will have privacy. We go to the next slide, please. Um, 
Another issue, which we mentioned before, was sort of the primary circulation path and wayfinding. And so this is the existing route. You can see how really there's just one way that you can connect to um, Anderson Hall, Fireside Lounge, and all of the area, all of the amenities that are on this side of the building. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, the veranda we imagined was kind of doing two things. The first and foremost was creating a scenic route for residents that takes advantage of the view um, and allows for some of those uh, chance encounters to happen with that amazing uh, view of, um, of the city and the gardens below. And in addition, it actually helps to clarify the circulation so that um, it's not so much of a maze anymore. It actually is this like beautiful scenic um, circular route through the building. Um, again, we are imagining that there is a wonderful outdoor deck for people to spend time on um, when the weather is lovely and little eddies of seating for people um, to sit and enjoy the view as well. So if we go to the next slide, please. Um, this view is if you are a bird flying outside in the sky and looking back at the existing building. This is what's happening now. You can see the, um, the B1 terrace with the bamboo grove. And then you can see the, um, the outside of the existing um, building there. Great. And if we go to the next slide, uh, this is the view showing the um, veranda addition. So um, on the right there, you can see this really lovely outdoor deck space. Um, we also are keeping the planting along the perimeter of the exterior so that we're really kind of mimicking what you have now, this beautiful city view, but also garden view. Um, and then we're integrating plantings both on the interior and exterior of this space so that it does really feel like part of the garden. Next, next slide, please. This is a view of um, the existing, it's not really a terrace, it's actually the space between the dining room and the plantings that is really just accessible for maintenance issues. Um, this is what it looks like now. And if we go to the next slide, this is what we're proposing with the veranda. So you can see here that um, there are really lovely um, uh, amounts of, of natural daylight. We're proposing a skylight that's um, adjacent to the dining room space. Um, which would allow there to be peekaboo views up into the city and the sky. It'll also bring in much more natural daylight into the corridor space as well as the dining room space. Um, you also can see that um, we are still, we're using floor to ceiling glass so that the views from the dining room can be retained and um, residents will have an amazing sweeping view of the city beyond. And then of course, little eddies of seating to um, allow for those chance encounters to, to happen. If we go to the next slide, this is a view of, um, again, the existing terrace, but looking at it from uh, the dining room perspective. If we go to the next view, this would be um, actually standing on that new veranda um, at the corner there where you can see um, this really lovely balcony that residents could occupy and take advantage of those spectacular views. Here we're imagining that there could be sliding doors that open up. So if there's nice weather that could be really open and residents could sit inside at the seating area and maybe outside as well. And if we go to the next view, we don't have a before for this because it would be outside of the building, literally. Um, this would be uh, from the perspective of standing on the balcony and then looking back in toward the veranda. So you can see that there's you know, some planting along the exterior, uh, very similar to what is happening now, but you can see that there's this really lovely um, uh, assortment of spaces that residents can occupy along that scenic circulation path. Okay, so moving on to lobby and mezzanine. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, one of the things that we've heard loud and clear is that Horizon House wants to feel like a home and not a hotel. And we know that there are a lot of, um, a, a lot of other um, retirement resident communities that don't feel that way. They do feel very much like a hotel. And so we really, really are taking it to heart. We want this to feel like a reflection of all of you. 
In addition, we want to highlight the artwork and we feel like the lobby is an amazing opportunity to highlight artwork. So you really see it the second that you walk into the door. We think there's an opportunity to bring some of the natural elements into the lobby experience as well. Right now, a lot of them are outside or um, in the dining area, but we feel like having like some nature on the entrance would be uh, calming and beautiful and add that sort of garden sensibility that you experience throughout the campus. We also feel like um, clarifying wayfinding is highly important. And then there's also a great opportunity to co-locate some, co some of the Horizon House employees as well, which we think will, again, um, build a stronger um, employee community at Horizon House as well. Um, and then last but not least, we feel like the uh, lobby has an opportunity to really amplify the happy buzz. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a lot of space in the lobby that really isn't being utilized to its full extent. And we would love the lobby to be a space where people have some opportunities to linger. So if we go to the next slide. Um, this is a view from the entry now, which you all I'm sure are incredibly familiar with. And if we go to the next view, uh, this is um, what we're proposing. So one of the key elements here is um, to really open the lobby up to level two. Um, one of the things that that does is it creates that feeling of an amplified happy buzz. You get to see activity not only on level one, but on the mezzanine level above. Um, there are places where residents can spend some time. We've been looking into ways of maybe integrating an electric fireplace or something that really represents a hearth for residents that people can sit and, and um, spend some time in the lobby. In addition, we've been working with the structure and layout of the um, ground level to create really clear wayfinding. So when you walk in the door, you know exactly where to go to talk to someone to help you find your way um, in, in you know, along campus, as well as clarifying visual sight lines between the front door and um, staff that are working at the front desk to enhance security. If we go to the next slide. Uh, this is a view toward reception um, if you're standing uh, with your back to the elevator as it is now and then um, this is the new view so here you can see it's a much more open experience we feel like um, with the um, horizon house uh, many of the offices relocated on level two it really opens the experience up both for horizon house um, employees because there'll be offices on level one and level two but also for residents you can imagine sitting on that upper level mezzanine and watching the action from above uh, in the lobby and then of course spending some time in the lounge <laughs> next to the fireplace um, as, a, as a wonderful place for residents to, to enjoy. And then the performance hall. As we mentioned before, one of the things that we learned pretty quickly was that there was really no way to expand this space to accommodate some of the larger scale um, performances and lectures that often happen at Horizon House. Um, <clears throat> some of the challenges we had were our architectural, we have shafts and um, column grids and other amenities that really kind of hemmed us in relative to expanding this space. So our team started to look for ways to find another space that would support some of those large scale events. And that led us to starting to study um, a new construction um, uh, auditorium space located on B1. So if we go to the next slide, um, you can see in the dashed line, um, where we're currently studying this new um, building. Um, we would retain a portion of um, the B1 courtyard as much as we can. And then we would add a brand new building um, perched on that courtyard that cantilevers out over the existing loading dock. Um, one of the things that um, we're really conscientious of is not taking away exterior space for residents which is why um, the veranda became a really important piece of the puzzle as far as allowing residents to have alternative outdoor space for their own use. And then we're trying to retain as much of that exterior uh, terrace space as possible throughout this design process. So if we go to the next slide, 
Um, you can see that um, by adding an additional auditorium space on B1, it expands the capacity for performance and it will be in conjunction to this space, the existing Anderson Hall. So that opens up a lot of opportunities for um, different types of events and uh, also opens up a lot of opportunities for um, potentially um, occupying both spaces at the same time for very, very large events. Um, in addition, it has amazing connection to nature and city views and really creates a unique experience for residents. If we go to the next slide. Um, this is a view, um, as I mentioned before, of the existing B1 Terrace and the existing building. And then if we go to the next slide, this is a view with the veranda and then also um, the new performance hall addition. One of the things that our team has studied um, in depth are sight lines. We, we worked really hard in the massing and design of this new performance hall to ensure that views from the fireside lounge were enhanced and not, um, not diminished. Um, which is why we added a green roof to this structure. So if you imagine looking out from the fireside lounge, you would have more of an extension of a garden type of experience that frames the city view beyond. We also were very, very cognizant of not diminishing views from the dining room experience as well. So again, from dining room, you can see out to the sky above that um, new structure, and you'll also get to see a very beautiful um, rooftop garden as part of, the, part of that experience. And then lastly, we also added um, an additional terrace um, on the kind of opposite side of that new performance hall. Um, which also could allow residents to utilize that as part of the um, auditorium experience, or when the auditorium is not in use, that could be opened up and residents could occupy the auditorium and the adjacent terrace. So if we go to the next slide, um, this is a view of the B1 terrace now. And then this is a view looking into the performance hall. There's still a bit of terrace there that you're not seeing in this view. Um, but again, we're really working on creating um, a lot of transparency at the ends of this structure so that you see through the auditorium and out toward the view. We go to the next slide. Um, this is a view looking the opposite direction of B1 Terrace back at the existing Horizon House building. And then this is a view from within that um, performance hall structure, again, looking back at Horizon House existing building and you can see a little slice of the fireside lounge up there as well. And then if we go to the next slide, um, in addition to the seven master plan projects, we've also been really thoughtful about how we phase these projects to minimize the um, inconvenience to all of you, but also to prioritize the projects that are going to have the most positive impact to the community. Um, so there have been a lot of people putting their heads together, working out when each of these projects would be um, best suited to come online and coordinated again to minimize inconvenience. And so we'll quickly run through the timeline for each of these projects. And then we'll touch on just a couple of additional things that we're beginning to study. Um, it's not part of the master plan, but other spaces that we think are really important as well. So if we go to the next slide, um, as I mentioned before, Anderson Hall is the furthest along in the design process. Um, it is estimated to start construction in early 2022, and that construction is estimated to go through mid 2022. We still have another design um, meeting to finalize the design elements, but this one is um, the first project that will start on the master plan. If we go to the next slide, please. Um, after that, um, there are three projects that are kind of working together in conjunction with each other to allow for that dining room expansion. So it's the veranda and the hearth, which is the dining room. Um, because they are co-located, those will happen at the same time. And then um, the mezzanine offices will also start around the same time, which will allow for the offices in the executive row to move up to level two. And then the next level, the next step would be the expansion of the dining. 
One of the things to note is that there isn't a great deal of work happening in the back of house kitchen. And so we're working really hard to maintain food service during this phase of construction so that um, residents aren't inconvenienced by the lack of kitchen. Um, these projects are slated to start late 2022 and go through um, early to mid 2023. If we go to the next slide, um, next would be the cafe lounge and teaching kitchen, which we're imagining construction would start um, mid 2023 and go through mid 2024. And then the next slide, um, lobby, we are imagining would start early 2024 and go through mid 2024. And then the performance hall would be the last uh, to start, which would be mid 2024 and would go through early 2025. So as you can see, we're pretty early in design with a lot of these projects, um, which means that um, you know, we're showing you the vision of what we imagine, um, but there'll be much more iteration to come and plenty of time for all of you to give us valuable feedback. So if we go to the next slide, um, there are a few other spaces that we are going to be looking at as well that we think are really, really important to Horizon House. Next slide, please. Um, one is um, the terraces. There are some amazing terraces, as you all know, as part of this campus. We feel like they give um, the campus some real character and connection to Freeway Park Beyond. Um, we have some landscape architects on our team that will be studying those spaces and making them even more useful for residents. Also the Wellness Center, we've been talking about making improvements to that space so that it better supports residents. And then last but not least, we're also um, planning to look on assisted living. Um, both on levels two and levels three. So those are other spaces that we will um, be looking at in the future. So um, now we can turn it over to um, our Q&A session. If we go to the next slide, um, there's actually a reminder for residents that are not in the room um, where they can send their um, their email questions. So Lauren C at horizonhouse.org and Lauren will read out the questions to the design team. Thank you all so much for your time. We really appreciate you being here and listening to this presentation and we're excited to hear feedback from all of you. So thanks so much. Uh, shall I start? I have a question. Here I am. Shall I stand? Maybe. Uh, as a gardener, uh, every time any of us bring someone to our dining room, they are absolutely amazed with what is outside of our windows. I really am sorry to see that kind of taken away. I do realize that you pushed it way out. It is there. So instead, you replace that with people coming by and waving to us as we sit in the dining room. Uh, that kind of bothers me a little bit. And then there's got to be a roof on that in order to keep people dry. Well, what happens to the beautiful view that we have of the skyline of, um, of Seattle? That troubles me a lot. The pictures that you showed that, that um, indicated those, those things seemed a little strange to me. The dining room seemed to have, rather than tables, kind of sitting areas. And that's not what the dining room, I believe, is going to look like. Uh, so that I found a little confusing. But my main concern is that everyone is so happy with how it looks in the dining room. And it would be a shame to lose that. And it sounds like the one side of the dining room will lose it altogether. So and I'll need a, mm -hmm. there, but, yeah. 
Yeah, I'll need to repeat all of this for the people on Zoom and uh, HHTV. So what uh, Anne-Marie uh, pointed out is that um, um, there was a lot. So in the dining room, uh, if you're sitting at uh, the dining room table and you are, you're going to lose your view uh, due to this uh, veranda and that, um, uh, am I saying it correctly? So far. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, then uh, for, sorry. So, and also in the dining room, it appears to be just a lot of seating areas versus what we have now, which is not seating areas. So we have tables now. And, um, yeah, um, I want to make sure I do an accurate job. This isn't so good. <laughs> do, you like, do you want us to answer up there? Uh, yeah, oh, uh, does that, Nika, they need to answer up here for the people on HHTV and Zoom. I think I could help. Okay. Um, so um, thank you so much for the question. Um, one of the things, do I need to take this off? Or, okay. Um, okay. Um, one of the things that um, we've, completely understand the view out from the dining room. And um, one of the things that we've worked really hard on with the new design is not taking away nature, but actually adding more. So maybe what wasn't clear in our views is that um, we would still have planting at the perimeter of the veranda, which we could, we could actually grow those beautiful hydrangeas, or maybe we were even able to move some of those hydrangeas to that new location. But in addition, we would also have a buffer <laughs> planting that would go underneath the skylights in the veranda that would add a little bit of privacy to the dining room. Um, as I mentioned, we're really early in the stages of design. And so we're exploring different seating configurations. We're exploring different planting configurations. And those are things that with valuable feedback from all of you, we can continue to work out. Our intention is um, that we are still creating that wonderful garden edge at the perimeter of the dining room, but also adding a new amenity, which would be the veranda. And in addition, we are um, re-strategizing some of the seating in the dining room, not, not taking tables away. We actually have a higher count of tables in the new design than currently is shown. We're just studying different configurations so that we can actually provide um, seats that people might feel comfortable sitting in in off hours. So when you see those little seating groups, the intention is that maybe you could just grab a cup of coffee and sit there if you wanted to. Um, but again, we're in early stages, so you'll probably see five, six, seven, eight uh, additional studies of that very area um, as time progresses. But Anne-Marie uh, pointed out that the uh, you'd be losing, if you're sitting in that table, uh, some views of the city. But that's not true. You would be actually be raising the roof of the veranda. So you would actually be, we would be raising the roof of the veranda to ensure that you have just as much view of the city, provided that nobody in the veranda is walking by you. Yeah, it, it, exactly. I think, um, as Elizabeth mentioned, we are in the early stages of our design process. Oh, and and we are uh, ensuring that we're not taking away any of the views, but to address them in a designed way, raise the ceiling, uh, slope the ceiling up towards the city. So that you're getting you're maximizing your views and so we will continue to look at it definitely will address uh, your concerns and, and or try to uh, at least so um, one of the challenges for us living in a community in this urban space is being able to have some um, secluded space outside of our apartments and right at the beginning of the presentation you spoke of people appreciating the nooks now what I see in all this opening up that you're providing for is as if you're going to an airport and you're going through this enormous open space of which 
you know, the entrances to the plains or I don't see us maintaining those um, not private spaces, but not having to be where everybody waves at you as they go by because you're right there. I was just told that residents on HHTV can actually hear the person asking the question. So thankfully, I won't have to paraphrase. <laughs> um, I think that's a really great point that you bring up. Um, one of the things that is a little bit tricky to show in our design presentation are some of those smaller moments. And um, we're definitely thinking about that. We know that not everybody wants to is extroverted and wants to be on display at all times. So as we're designing these spaces, we are really looking at ways to create moments of intimacy and privacy that people could be with other people or they could just be alone and in a public space. Um, we just haven't shown them much in the renderings, primarily because I think um, uh, we didn't have enough time to show every single nook and cranny. We would have been pulled out of the room, you know, um, uh, for taking all of your time, but it's something that we are really thinking about. Um, and I think that your comment is really important because as we continue the design process, I think we need to kind of balance those two. How do we facilitate and build the happy buzz, but also how do we create a little bit more intimacy and privacy for residents as well? So it's definitely top of mind. Um, I apologize. I just don't think we showed some of those in the views, but we will um, we will definitely integrate some of those spaces in. But empirically, there will be more eddies in private spaces than we currently have. Correct, yeah, actually that's- Despite what the rendering show. Right, and, and you can see that a little bit more in some of the floor plans and axonometrics. I mean, a lot of the things that we're trying to do is create um, even more of those types of spaces throughout all of the spaces that we're creating, um, because we see that those spaces are really popular. They're really utilized well. So we wanna make sure we're building on what's already going on and working well, not taking things away, so. I would like to add one more question. Um, I see that there's an enormous amount of glass. I'm over here. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Hello. There's an enormous amount of glass. Is this still, yes. Um, in the dining room. And if we go to climate change with the summers as we've had, um, what kind of uh, protection, those windows are facing west and northwest, and there will be an incredible amount of heat in the dining area and anywhere else you're putting in glass. And on top of that, I just want, I just want to ask about sacrifice of the patio which is used as an open space and we can create our own intimate spaces down there that appears to have been replaced by a, a roof garden that we go out on or it's simply a roof garden that we do not go out on hey, thank you for that comment um uh first about the abundance of glass i think that is a um, common thread for all of our projects, I think, in moving forward, a lot use of a lot of glass and how that's going to affect your okay. interior environment. Um, and uh, there are a number of ways you can address that. One is the performance of the glass itself. It has uh, super high tech uh, glass nowadays have the ability to block out UV light, but still be able to see through and let daylight in without really uh, increasing your heat gain in the inside of the room. So that'll be one way, uh, but we will be looking at sun shading, uh, actually having um, sun shading that would block direct light from going into the dining space and you know heating up anybody who is sitting there. So we will be looking at many number of ways to address uh, the direct sunlight, for sure. That would be something that we will uh, make sure to address. Um, other ways you could do, there are many other ways to do them, but we will certainly be conscious of the user. Um, and the other one about taking over the B1 patio. Um, the plans that we showed today 
are showing a non-occupier hole, so you could not go out onto the roof. But if you have the desire to want to occupy that space, we can certainly look at that. But I think that performance hole is very, very early in the stage of design, and we have not you know, addressed some of those concerns. So it would be great to hear more of that, um, any input you may have on that new performance hole space and how we should be designing them. The patio is a very large use area. I think we've heard mixed um, feedback on, on that, that patio either being really utilized or maybe not utilized enough. And so I think we'll be working with our landscape team to analyze what's going on right now more in detail and really address them in a meaningful way. Question over here. Yeah, I would, um, before my real question, just comment on what you said. Please do pay close attention to that because I think you get a lot of resistance to getting rid of that space. It's the one open yet private space that we have as residents here, short of going outdoors. So what I really wanted to comment on was the new dining room concept that you've shown. I really like the coffee shop idea and all the rest of it up until you get to the dining room. And then I have a great deal of difficulty visualizing a more formal dining room in the space that you have. The finishes look to me to be very hard and cold. So you might comment on that. The other thing having to do with the city views, the seats along the window that you identified as the favorite seats, they are in fact, but on your new concept, you've turned the tables 180 degrees so that people sitting along the edge who are sitting on looks like benches are turning their back to the most beautiful part of that place. Yes, I, um, I, as I mentioned, we're in the early stages of design. And to be honest with you, we actually have had four or five different strategies for seating along that edge. Um, that particular uh, study was the most recent study and showed the most updated architectural design. But um, I agree with you. I think we need to keep looking at the way that those seats are oriented and they may want to turn 90 degrees for that very reason. So again, we're really early in design and we'll be noodling on this over and over again to make sure that we get it just right. Um, and then in addition to the finishes, um, you know, we haven't, we're not far enough in design yet where we've even selected the finishes yet. Um, what we're doing right now is kind of establishing a look and feel. We're figuring out the organization of the space from an operational perspective and then studying variations of how the dining room seating and organization might work. So um, this is a great time to get feedback like that because we can incorporate that as we continue to develop the design further. Um, I think what our goal was in that space was um, to really highlight the connection to the outdoor spaces and let a lot of the plant material and natural um, structure and finishes really be kind of the stars of the show. Um, but I agree with you, I think we're not done and we'll layer in some more of that kind of homey quality with the materials and finishes as we get further along in the design process. I have a, a question about the new hall. Uh, which you indicated would be uh, Anderson Hall way that it could be the overflow, but it looks to me like it's on the lower level. It's access to the new hall to be managed. Yes, I apologize if that was confusing. Um, I didn't necessarily, what I meant was that there could be a technological connection. So if you had a really large event and you were um, needing to see content that was on the screen, or perhaps there was a, a piano performance in the new hall, that potentially we could live stream um, that same performance up here and create that type of a connection. The other thing we learned in our um, 
in our early investigation and, and through um, interviews with resident committees is that sometimes there are events that have multiple facets to it. So there might be something happening in Anderson Hall and then in the Fireside Lounge and then in another area. And so we imagine that for those really large scale events um, that there might be opportunities for different types of events happening simultaneously in all of the spaces. So it just provides a little bit more flexibility for, uh, for, those type, for hosting those types of events. Another comment on the um, impact on the D1 Terrace. In the summertime, uh, once a week, we have barbecues out there, which are very well attended and enjoyed, and opportunities for socializing and oftentimes meeting people you've never met before. I'm concerned that we lose that opportunity. I understand the importance of the performance hall but I am concerned about losing an equally important opportunity for summertime use. And also just casually people go out there and sit oftentimes uh, and even barbecue out there or bring their own dinners. Um, our apartment looks down on that terrace. And so I frequently look down and see that it is being in fact enjoyed. Yes, um, I'm interested in the walkway, which appears to be the veranda, going from the orchids in the west wing around by the dining room and over, and apparently it's a walkway that will end over somewhere close to the north tower. And this is apparently a, another way of residents being able to access this area. Now, is this a covered walkway that can be used throughout the year? It is not a, an outside with, yeah. It is covered the complete way. Thank you. Yes, it's, it's entirely an interior walkway and that's connecting you from Orchid Lounge and going around the dining and the elevator hall out there in right in front of Fireside Lounge, that's where you would end up. Okay. Question over here. Yes, thank you. I'd like to second the earlier comment about finishes, and I respect your response that you're still working on that, and I'm pleased to hear that. I have two things I'd like to suggest about that. I find a lot of modern yeah. interior design uh, bent on steel and glass that is very unfriendly. And it looks good at first glance and a few minutes later, it's cold. And in wanting to protect the wonderful buzz that we have here, I hope the materials that you use and the furniture that you choose will reinforce that. Uh, the second comment then has to do with colors. And today we get a lot of grays and blues but we get a lot of gray here in Seattle, nine or 10 months out of the year. So my hope is that in thinking about the colors that you choose, uh, they will um, lend to being warm uh, during the winter and, and fall months. Well, um, as an interior designer, I really appreciate your comment because um, I definitely um, uh, know the importance of, um, of materials and honestly, our whole team does. Um, we uh, absolutely intend for the finishes to be warm and welcoming and um, residential in nature. Um, one of the things that we have been looking at, and you may notice in some of the dining room renderings is that while we've used a little bit of blue, we've also used a good amount of warm tones as well. Um, the main dining room we were showing with the lighter colored wood and terracotta tile and copper and other materials that are really warm. Um, and so we're really trying to kind of allow there to be enough uh, diversity to create a range of different experiences, but each of those experiences are intended to be um, warm and home-like. Um, there are some uh, expressions, um, lots of plants as well, yeah. There are some things like the exterior um, 
uh, window walls that are keeping with the existing character of the Horizon House buildings. Um, but we're also looking at integrating a good amount of wood into those um, uh, architectural expressions as well. So um, great time to have feedback like this. And it's something that we can take back with us. And as we continue to evolve the design, really work on making sure that we get right. So thank you. We have a question over here. Well, I just wanted to remind people who are doing these studies that what is going on in Horizon House now is not our normal level of activity because we have been heavily constrained by the COVID. And so I've seen things that look to me like um, that's like it half masked. Um, the amount of activity that goes on here uh, is much higher than what you're seeing today because of the restrictions that we've been under for two years. And so, um, in fact, it's only very recently it's starting to get back to something approaching what's been our normal level. And I don't want to see the design heavily influenced by the restrictions of COVID. Oh, I, I, think, um, I think that's a really good point. But, um, you know, Luckily, we had an opportunity to talk with a good deal of residents through all of our um, engagements and um, kind of did our studies based on what would typically happen um, rather than observations of what's happening now. Um, I think that you know all of us have been cooped up, so to speak, and um, what we're intending to do is amplify um, the normal activity at Horizon House pre-pandemic. So that's definitely something we've kept in mind. I have two comments. One, the concept of the double floor entry, I think is stunning with beautiful woods. And, oh my goodness. And the walkway is stunning. And my second comment is, I hope I live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, I suspect your biggest, to most of us, the biggest trade-off we're faced with here is loss of Parkview Terrace in replacement by Performance Hall. Yeah. I was pleased to see that the Performance Hall is the most delayed, and I hope that that will give us time to judge whether the loss of the Parkview Terrace is worth and the increases of ability with the Anderson Hall to handle crowds and the overflow may not make a performance hall uh, a good trade-off under the circumstances. I hope there will be time afforded in the process to do that. Absolutely. I think that there will be time in the process to evaluate because Anderson Hall is the very first project. Um, we have a really great opportunity to evaluate how the changes have improved, um, you know, the facilitation of these types of events. The connect new, um, more robust connection to Fireside Lounge may offer a little bit more room for expansion. So um, we'll definitely be evaluating. We'll be working with Mike and Eli and the executive team to figure out, you know, how we need to prioritize things moving forward. So, um, I was very pleased to see that you're investing um, more energy into creating more gathering spaces for residents. The Fireside Lounge now is really an important place for many of us, if not all of us. But one thing you didn't talk about is what happens to the Fireside Lounge in the middle of all of this. What are your plans there? Well, the Fireside Lounge right now is, I mean, it just, just had a recent renovation. And so we don't have um, immediate plans for changing it. Um, what we are trying to do is kind of build on what has recently been updated and create a stronger connection between um, these two spaces. Um, sorry, Anderson Hall and Fireside Lounge. And then when the veranda comes into play, there'll just be another connection um, that, that I actually think will create um, more activity and create even more of a nexus of activity in this area. 
Um, so we don't have any immediate plans for changing it radically. We just want to kind of build on what the new renovation has brought to fruition. Hi, a comment and a question. A lot of us have hearing and visual difficulties. And when I see all this glass and all the space and even arranging tables like this, you're sitting there, you don't hear or see the people that you're sitting with. So I would like to make sure that you keep vision and hearing under the microscope. Um, my second question is, did I see steps going up somewhere in the lobby? Yes. And my comment on that is a lot of us don't do steps anymore. What's the bang for the bus? The staff will not be allowed to use the elevator so that residents can use the elevator. <laughs> yes, so um, so the stairs, we that is something that we have considered. Um, the stairs were um, in part for staff and connecting those offices from the second level to the first level so that there was kind of an ease of, um, of uh, circulation between those two areas. Um, we also are directly adjacent to the elevators. And so people who are not able to use the stairs can take the elevator and they're co-located. So there's a more equity of experience. You don't have to go somewhere really far away to get the elevator, it's right there. Um, so we're trying to create kind of a range of experiences that support staff and residents and um, also give people an opportunity to um, have another area to perch and uh, take in some of the activity that will inevitably be even more so um, when things are back to normal in the lobby. Can I say one thing? Yes. About, uh, I think you brought up a really good point, though. What is the bank for the bus? And that's something as we move forward, we'll analyze to use the cost. Um, yeah, so, yeah, we're yeah. Just staff members. And no, absolutely. Really, it's something we've talked about quite a bit, so we're, we're looking at that. Thank you. Can we have a question? I would like to comment what uh, also what Mary and Marie were saying about the flowers. I was absolutely heartbroken when I saw you introduce the idea of having the dining room and then the flowers way over there after the walkway. Number one, I'm very concerned about the walkway. Uh, you have a dining room, you have people sitting there intimately discussing things, and then you have people walking past, or maybe even jogging past those who are younger. Uh, and so this, this interruption, is, it, it takes away from the intimacy. The other thing is, now as I see it, the flowers are on the other side of the walkway. So we're no longer surrounded by nature. And this is something that, for us, this is one more thing that is like home. We see the changes in the in the seasons in the beautiful flowers. Once they are removed from us, it's a different feel. It's no longer um, this this vibrancy that we have, this community that we have. So I'm very concerned. I would be inclined not to even have the walkway, even though it's, I understand it. I understand the, the legit legitimacy of it. But I want nature, I want the outside to be closer to me, and I want the privacy of my table next to the window to see the flowers, to see the birds, to see the sky, whatever it is. Can we, can we show that slide again? Because I think there's a misunderstanding. Yes, um, thank you, Eli. Um, one of the things that uh, we've been working really hard to retain is that connection to nature in the dining room. So while the um, veranda actually does push the exterior window wall out to accommodate for that pathway, um, we actually have an, a planter on the interior perimeter of the dining room as well. So you'll still have um, the dining room surrounded by plantings, um, but in addition, you'll have the walkway and then another layer of plantings that happen outside of, the, um, outside of that walkway. There'll be also additional opportunities for plantings to be um, uh, happen on the balcony that we're adding to the veranda. And then of course, um, all along the perimeter um, that looks down along uh, or down onto the B1 terrace. So the intention is not to take it away. The intention is to add an additional amenity space, but also um, maintain 
and bring even more nature into the dining room experience. Um, so I think it's important for us to hear um, this feedback because it may mean that we need to show even more densely planted perimeter, but all of those things are things that we could address as the design progresses. Yeah. Okay. So there's- Now you'll yeah. understand why these mics go in and out. They do, that's one of the things. I am coming and looking at this from a group and many of us who use this room have never really asked for a performance hall. We have asked all along for this room to be brought up into complete standards as much as you can to give us this capability in this position in this room that's adjacent to everything around us to do all kinds of our performances, our lectures, our meetings, and everything in this area. I have personally never asked for a performance hall. That's basically what we call this room. This is our performance, our lecture, our everything room. And I see no reason forever to put in a big performance hall and take out one of our main areas that we love outside. So I just wanted to make that really clear to all of you. I am not for a performance hall. My question is about the concept for the food service long, long term. Are we looking at a return to table service or buffet service or some combination of the two? Oh, and you take that right. So for right now, we obviously are doing the buffet thing because of staffing. The long-term goal is, whether it's this design or something else, is to still have a lower labor model of food service. That is a combination of some sit-down dining uh, with uh, table service, some grab it and take it yourself, some bringing it to your table. Uh, so there'll be a combination of things. I think long-term, we're going to definitely experience what the rest of the country is experiencing, and that is food service everywhere is going to change dramatically and we need to make sure that we design for something that doesn't require something we can't get like the staff to do it. So it's not necessarily tied exclusively to what you're seeing here, but in general, uh, you know, we will have a lower labor model of delivery for food service. It'll be essential just for the survival of the, the program. Maybe time for a couple more questions here. Yes, thank you. Um, I noticed on the timeline, that uh, Anderson Hall is scheduled for what, about six months a bit now. Um, and I'm wondering what the plans are, what the plans are for all those groups that are currently meeting in that area. Uh, where are we gonna go? So the game plan would be to use the Sky Lounge as much as possible. We're gonna have to divvy things up. I mean, here's the challenge of building in a building that is already built that if you do something, you displace the activity and the people during that time frame, and you have to parse it out. Uh, this is in part why we decided to start this in January rather than December when you're at holiday time and people want to have, you know, good fun here in the space. And that's just, you know, that is a challenge. I and mean, if you're building a brand new building somewhere, well, then, you know, you don't have that issue. So we're going to do our best to parse it out to the available spaces, and the Sky Lounge would be one of them. Uh, when you showed the picture of the lobby and how it would show more art, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see any art, much less more. We, um, as I said, we're really early in the phase of design. And so there were moments of art in the renderings, um, but I think that our point is just that that's something we're thinking about with all of the spaces. So as we get further along in the design process, we're really looking at ways that the art can be integrated and featured. One of the things we learned from the art committee is that there are several works that are in storage. There are some three-dimensional pieces of art that currently do not have a place to be shown. And so when we're looking at new spaces like the lobby or the dining room, we're thinking about some of those pieces and maybe how we can integrate them into the design 
Um, your observation is very astute in that we haven't integrated that into the renderings yet, um, but it's definitely something that we will continue to think about as we evolve the design of those spaces. The lobby is really early in design, as you can see, it's, it's out of a couple of years, so there'll be more iterations to come. Last, last question. There will be time. There will be more time. There will be, trust me. I'd like to go back to the veranda. Um, it looked to me like there were indoor plants in the dining room, which in my mind makes it look like a hotel. It isn't comfortable and um, seasonal like we have now with the outdoor plants. Yeah, I, I would just say, um, just for the sake of our renderings, I think we put in something that looks a little bit like ferns. Um, <laughs> I, you'll have to forgive us. Um, that is just because it hasn't been designed yet. Um, we have a wonderful group of landscape architects that will be working on, on the exterior plantings. And then we have consultants that specialize in interior plantings as well. And we can create a very rich, biodiverse experience for the interior plantings as well. Um, and that's something that we can continue to evolve through the design process too. I promise it won't just be the ferns that we're showing <laughs> in our renderings right now. Can, can I add one more thing to that? Um, thank you so much for all the comments with regards to the veranda. That is also something, you know, we, we are continuing to develop. And one of the things that I do want to just mention is it's not just adding another path. When you think about access from the West Tower to the lobby, West Tower to this space or Fireside Lounge, currently you're having to walk through the dining hall as is right now. So just providing that outlet is going to help get access to this elevator right outside of this room a little bit easier. So th those were the origins of why we were thinking about the veranda. By no means that's the you know absolute finished product or the final thing, but we will continue to take all of these comments and go back to the drawing board and, and address all of these issues. But we, you know, I think the veranda is also an opportunity for a new type of uh, space that you can chance encounter, hang out. It's more of a the so, street sidewalk that you could occupy, sit and enjoy. So, you know, just a slightly different perspective from what it is now, but we certainly don't intend to take away the planters that is there now. If anything, I think our, our um, uh, stance is to increase the amount of greenery rather than take away. So just keep that in mind. In, in classic Horizon House, fashion, it seems like uh, critics often uh, are heard most. And I'm just curious, is there, does, is there anybody here that likes what they've seen? Oh, okay, good, 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 good. I just want to make sure that you're out there. <laughs> I just wanted to note uh, the universal agreement on absolutely everything that is our tradition. <laughs> And I, my experience has been that, you know, people really like change so long as nothing's different. <laughs> so that we are not trying to sell anybody on an idea. Uh, these are concepts and designs that are the product of the conversations that have been had with numerous people. It doesn't mean that they are all the right ones. We're going to orchestrate a process where input can continue to come in and you can chime in. And I hear you loud and clear on the, the performance hall. You know, we floated that baby around a couple of years ago and you think we would have learned something. But apparently not. But we tried a different approach. And you know what? We really don't have an axe to grind. I mean, I, I would say I, I kind of have a little bit of an axe to grind in one kind of two ways, just so you know, is activating that dining area in some fashion or form so it is more usable throughout the day. We are limited in our footprint here, and we have to create spaces where people can have different experiences during the day and not feel like it's Groundhog's Day all over again. So I don't know what iteration it is, but the activation of that space is critical. Right now, it's three times a day and really only two. So let's find a way, whatever that might be, to activate it. 
The other is that connector route where we can bring our campus together in a way that isn't such a long haul around. Now, we have to do it in a way that captures the indoor outdoor experience in a way that, that gives the foliage, gives the feeling, gives the intimacy and the privacy. You've just given the architects a challenge. They need to figure out a way to do it. So uh, when you didn't see art or you didn't see something in particular there, again, it's because it's not a final design. What we're saying is here is a general direction we're going, somewhat firmer on Anderson Hall or we wouldn't be lifting a hammer in January, but the rest of it is quite open as to what we can do. March. So, March? Yeah. I should march? Is it time for me to march, Eli? I'm just not January. Oh, it's starting? Uh, Anderson Hall, correct. It's starting in March? Yes. Right. Okay. I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> sure. Moving right along, marching right along, uh, we will queue up meetings as things kind of progress in certain areas. When we start to turn the dial a little bit tighter and get back in a room, some small groups, some large groups, get more feedback, get a little closer to materials into glass or not glass, plants, not plants, and begin to close in. And you're a part of the process. And this was the first thing. So as you're thinking through your comments, you digest some of this stuff. You kind of see it in a new perspective. You know, my wife and I are doing some design stuff, and I'm really good about, God, I got this great idea. I got this great idea. And I want to sell her on the idea. And invariably, she just goes, I hate that idea. <laughs> then she sits with it for a while, and she comes back with a better version of what I suggested. Why? Because... I triggered her thinking, she kind of it got her thinking about some stuff. That's what we want here. You see something, don't feel like you have to be angry or mad or, or feel like you're being railroaded. You take that information in, you digest and say, well, now there are elements of this that make sense. And then there are these things that just bug me. Well, that's what we want to hear about. So we will structure it so that that input can be had so that we'll get closer and closer to designs that make people feel like this is the place they want it to be. It's not an event. It is a process and it's a long process. And we want everyone to take an active role in that and to say what you gotta say, but do it with the spirit of good intent. The intent being to make it a place that works for everyone, which doesn't always mean it works for me in particular. Think of everybody as a group. And we'll see where it all goes. Thank you, Mathieu, and thank you for being here to participate. I have a comment to make, if I may, Brad Hildebrand. I think one major point that hasn't been made is with regard to the new auditorium. It is important, not only intrinsically, but because it also frees this space for badly needed meetings for which there has been a great demand.